If you disregard the state's satanic ritual theory, the entire nature of the crime changes. It starts you thinking, well, we're, maybe we're not looking for these extreme suspects. We're looking for someone who's kind of ordinary, invisible. So at that point, we thought we should put more funding into further DNA testing. And we're getting packages and shipments of all sorts of DNA samples that we're then forwarding on to our DNA expert. Out there was a process that was going on that either would be the impetus for exoneration or would be the state's last chance to demonstrate in this highly controversial case that he was good for it. And Damien's reaction to that was that he was absolutely adamant about the DNA testing. Of all the samples and all the various hairs and things that got tested, there was nothing. None of the DNA came back. Nothing matched Damien, Jason, or Jesse. What was interesting, however, were some unknown hairs. And there was one hair in particular that was in the binding of one of the ligatures. The boys had their hands tied with shoelaces, and right in the middle of a knot that had been tightened, there was a hair jammed in that knot. Had the hair been located anywhere other than inside a ligature binding, I would say, you know, it's not as significant as it could be. But given its location, I think it's particularly damning evidence. The hair that was tied into Michael Moore's ligature had to come from somebody. So over Christmas 2006, we studied John Douglas's report and started to think about who that foreign profile could belong to. 